Dudes, what's up? We're back in another tutorial here for Vol Hunters. Vol Hunters has changed a lot in the last like years, even in the last, you know, six months. So a lot of the tutorials I've seen or guides I've seen for researches and using your knowledge points or your knowledge stars is kind of outdated. And each of these mods has a lot of information to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief overview of each of the mods because honestly each mod deserves its own video and I'm going to kind of rank them from like best to last because some of these are absolutely necessary to have in Vault Hunters and other ones you don't really need. Also some of these don't make sense to take if you've already taken another one and some of these only work if you've taken other ones. So the researches and the mods that you're going to unlock can be very complex. So I'm going to go ahead and start just going through these and explaining which ones I think that you should start with, which ones are the best, and then which ones are the worst. I've also played from level 0 up to 65 twice over the last couple months here. So I have a lot of experience with the early and mid game, and all of this is recent knowledge. The very first mod I recommend taking is Double Pouches. You can already craft pouches from the start, which is a very nice change that they made to the game. So definitely look into actually making pouches. Uh, and you can do that without even unlocking a mod. If you watch my other tutorial on Vault Hunters, you'll see how you can get a pouch for free in your first vault. The reason why I think you should take double pouches is because I personally try and loot as much as possible, especially early game, so that you can get a ton of resources and the number one thing that slows me down early game is inventory management. Double pouches will help with this. Make a couple double pouches, make some pickup modules, and make sure that you're picking up most of the loot that you're going to be getting from the vaults. This is going to help you clean up your inventory and loot faster. Another really, really good mod to take right at the beginning is Vault Compass, especially if you're getting lost in the vault. I know a lot of people get lost in the vaults, and it's, uh, it's easy to. If you don't have the vault compass yet, a trick that I have for you is just to go in one direction. When you first get into a vault, uh, put in the in-game chat what direction the vault is facing. Go that one direction. That way you know when you're done looting in the vault, you can just go the opposite direction to get back to your portal. What the vault compass does is it points towards the portal. So if you're looting with other people and you're playing on a server like I do, you can actually kind of tell where people are based on where the vault compass is pointing. So it's really good for scavs or something where you're trying to, if you're trying to meet up and share some of the stuff that you have looted. You can also reset these. I normally shift and like look at the ground and then hold down to the compass to reset them. And that's if I find like a lodestone or some other thing that I need to be able to come back to. Um, so that's, they're really useful for that as well. Waystones are pretty much necessary if you play on a server. They help you get to other people's bases. They help you travel around the server. Even if you are on a single player world, you may have a big desert that you have to fly super far out to get to and collect resources with waystones. You can get there within seconds uh, just by teleporting. I'll actually show you how waystones works. So here's a waystone right here. I can go out to this swamp, which if I look at the map, the swamp is very, very far away from my house. So my base was over here and then the swamp's over here. So if I go back and I teleport back to my base, You'll see now I've just traveled almost 9,000 blocks just in a second. Uh, waystones can be expensive and there is a cheaper option. You can also make these warp plates which are a little bit cheaper and then you can link these up. And the thing is anyone can use those warp plates even if they haven't unlocked waystones. So that makes it so that anyone on the server can travel around with these warp plates. The next mod that I recommend you take is stack upgrades. What these do is it allows you to fit more stacks of an item in your backpacks or your pouches. So right now this doesn't have a stack upgrade so you could only fit a stack of any one block in here. But if I put this tier 3 stack upgrade in here, um, it says it's going to increase the amount of stacks we can fit in there by 8. So now we can fit 8 stacks in each slot in this backpack. Now I don't want to tell you to just take that without a reason why. So the reason why I would take that so early on is it's going to help free up your inventory once again. Because if you're looting in the vault, your pouches are going to uh, fill up really fast. So you want stack upgrades so you can hold more of the loot in your pouches. You can clean up your inventory, you can loot faster, and you can come home with more loot. 
Now, the next thing I would think about going into is either a storage mod, which I'll get into those, or alchemy. The potions are very powerful. Not only will these help give you more health, it'll also help the modifiers that you put on them as well. So here's a good example. Here's a slaughter's potion, and here's a slaughter's vial. So the vial is the one that you make first. If you upgrade, then you'll get this potion. So if you hover over these, you'll see that this one heals four hit points, which is two hearts. This one heals six hit points, which is three hearts. We can see I also have an effect on this. So if you use an alchemy table and you put this in, you can see there's all these different effects that you can put on the vial. Now on the vial, you can restore 40 mana or 20% mana. But with the potion, you can restore 60 mana or 30% mana. And the more you upgrade the potion... So going from vials to potions to mixtures to brews, the more those other effects or buffs will scale as well. So I know with the brew, you can get either 50% of your full mana or 100% mana every single time you drink a brew, which is very, very useful. But to start off, you might want to invest in potions, you know, and if you can afford mixtures, that one as well. Now, by this time in the progression, another issue you may be facing is storage at home. You want to de-loot, but it's taking forever and it's just tedious. One of the best storage mods, and the one that I recommend you take first, is drawers. Drawers look like these right here. By default, they can hold 2,000 items. And you can even upgrade those with upgrades like this one, and then you'll be able to hold 16 times that 2,000. So it's going to be like 32,000 wooden chunks that I can fit in here. There's also a thing called a store controller right here that's what this is and if you have a bunch of random things for your drawers in your inventory and you just double click on this they will all go into the appropriate drawer it's a very very fast way to dilute with most of the items that you're going to be finding in the vaults now if you want to be able to see what you have in all of your drawers and how much you have of each item the next thing i recommend you take is simple storage network i did not do it in this playthrough because I got a lot of knowledge stars and then I just went into refined storage. But I think simple storage network is a good route to go towards the beginning of the playthrough. Now I haven't done much with it and I don't know much with it. But it may need a power mod. Which I really like power. Iron generators is really easy to use but you're going to have to keep fueling it. I really recommend going into power if you can afford it. I think iron generators is cheaper. It looks like it's only one point to go into. So if you need a little bit of power definitely go into iron generators. But if you save up for power, you'll have power, which is they also call forge energy, FE, for the rest of your playthrough. You won't need to go into any other power mod. Then I would suggest going into colossal chest and refined storage just to help with all of your item management. Or you could start going into belts, backpacks, and big backpacks. These will increase how many like modifications you can put in the backpack. Uh, these slots right here, the upgrades. And they'll also allow you to collect, uh, have more pouches in here. Like this one is pretty much maxed out. Whereas this pouch right here is the size you start with. And then as you unlock bigger backpacks and make bigger backpacks, you get way more slots. So now let's talk about farming. All of these were really about looting and, and, and quality of life and trying to save you time, which is my number one goal in Vault Hunters. You won't have many problems with your farming early on unless you have it set to grindy. But the default amount of things that the vault altar will ask for, you'll be fine just farming those manually until mid game and maybe even into late game. I think the number one farming mod is modular routers. Now modular routers can do a lot of things. Right now I have a modular router set up in here that collects up dripstone and cactus. It's really easy. So when this dripstone gets too long, it breaks the dripstone using this breaker module right here. And it will also vacuum up the dripstone and place it into this chest. I also have this simple cactus farm where this modular router is going to suck up the cactus and place it into this chest. You can also make any kind of crop farm with modular routers and any kind of mob farm with modular routers. So they just make farming everything super easy. There, it is also my unloading system. So when I come back from a vault, all I have to do is place my pouch down on one of these spots, and then it'll pull my items and put them into the correct location. The modular routers is amazing. It's, it's one of my favorite mods. But you may be asking, okay, how do I get mobs to spawn? 
There's two options here. You can either go Cagerium or you can go Mob Spawners. I recommend Mob Spawners because it's cheaper. Cagerium is very, very expensive. Cagerium is a lot easier, but it is way more expensive. So I would recommend going Mob Spawners and I'll show you the kind of setup that I have set up in this world. So here is the setup that I have. There is a Mob Spawner right there. You can craft that when you unlock Mob Spawners. You'll also get different kinds of mob eggs from inside the vault. You'll get mystery eggs and then you'll roll those and then you can unlock these. Let's say I needed some gold. So I took the zombified piglin spawn egg. I put it in this chest right here. This modular router is set up to put the egg in there. And then I have some wireless redstone to turn on the spawner. Then I have this modular router that actually kills the piglins. I have two modular routers set up to kill the piglins. And I also have this modular router that is set up to suck up all the items that these things drop and then put it into this drawer setup. So you can see our gold nuggets go up as the piglins are being killed. The cool thing is this thing also sucks up the XP and it makes more XP bottles from the XP these guys are dropping. Mob spawners can handle a lot of mobs. It can't handle all of them. Like I wouldn't suggest putting a wither in here or an iron golem spawn egg. Uh, I don't know how this would handle it. I mean, it would spawn them, but like I, the handling part afterwards is going to be a little bit more complex, but it can handle most of the mobs that you are going to get, and it's going to be great early game. So let's talk about Kajerium. Kajerium is a one block solution for each of the mobs, and you kind of want to get four mob eggs in each of the Kajerium cages. This is a mob cage from Kajerium. You put in the Enderman spawn eggs, and then they will just poop out ender pearls and here's a binding plate that you need for like the boss type characters uh this one we have set up with a wither and we have over 800 nether stars which is crazy i also like keeping the really pesky mobs like these guys uh in the kajerium cages because i don't really want them going into my uh, mob spawner okay so modular routers is good for crop farms but if you don't use modular routers Botany Pots is uh, really good. Botany Pots is like a one block solution. It's like the Kajerium, but for plants. But Botany Pots is expensive. That's why I recommend you do modular routers first. You make some crop farms with those. Because uh, each one of these takes two Blopal ingots. So it takes two Black Opal ingots uh, to make the Botany Pot that has the hopper built in. Otherwise, you can't pull the inventory out of the Botany Pots. So they, it would just be stuck in here. Botany Pots is great for farming a whole variety of different plants. Another thing that can be pretty useful is easy villagers and easy piglins. If you get them set up, there'll be a little bit something like this where you just input the gold and then it outputs anything that these guys drops. So this is a good way of getting obsidian or anything else that these guys drop. Okay, there are some weird things that you can't farm with any of these other mods and you're going to have to go into the big mods. I've gone into Botania before, I've gone into Mechanism, and I've gone into Create. I've never done Thermal Expansion, so I don't know as much about this one. But honestly, I just I don't think you need it if I've never had to go into it. Create, I think, is going to be the most helpful. Uh, mechanism is cool, but I think that Create is honestly going to be more helpful than Mechanism. And then there's certain stuff you can only do with Botania. And all of these are so large, and you can do so many things with them, they would need their own videos. Just know that all of these are very, very powerful. And uh, you should definitely do some more research into these. Okay, so those are my general thoughts on all the mods. Again, I, I've played this from level 0 to 75 twice over the last few months. So I've, I've played a lot of the early and mid game. And these were all the mods that I decided to go. And uh, where my thoughts are once I've played this through twice now in the last few months. I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful. hope you had some fun in this one. I know I had a lot of fun. Anyways, I hope you leave a like. I hope you are subscribed. And if you're interested, I think you should stay up to date with uh, some of the other Vault Hunters content that I come out with. I have a whole series where I played through. We cover a lot of things that will be helpful in that as well. Awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.